Now at 11, breaking news as severe storms blow through our region, leaving extensive damage in many hometowns. Tonight, several families are without homes and thousands have no power. I'm right here at the Med Express on Timberlake Road where you can see the building right here behind me. The wall is just completely gone and there's debris all over the ground. And this is the same building that the Starbucks is also located in right here off of Timberlake Road. Now I spoke to fire officials who tell me that a stretch about a mile stretch of Timberlake Road all the way from Waterlick to Greenview Drive is where most of the damage was. And we're going to show you some video here right now, though. This is the floor show business and their building, which is completely ripped off. The front of the building you see is just completely torn off. Now, owners work to salvage what they could from the damage, as you see there on the screen. Now, we also spoke to some folks over at Waterlick Tire Garage as well, and you can see vehicles just flipped over on their roofs and owners there tell me they're just devastated by this damage. Now this was a very long track tornado, a long track storm, if you will, that moved pretty much from uh, the Greensboro area First off this evening, moved into Danville, Pennsylvania County, and then moved right along the 29 corridor. And you can see that this thing weakened a little bit and then re-strengthened right as it hit over Lynchburg. But one thing for sure, just looking at the damage, this is the worst tornado that this area has ever seen. The flyover from Air 7 clearly shows the tornado's path, ripping through the tree line, throwing them in all directions, heading straight for Nottaway Drive. Nearly all the homes in the neighborhood had damage, but the ones closest to the tornado center suffered the worst impacts. Even an RV can be seen blown down on its side between two demolished homes. Even one of the newer homes in the neighborhood was leveled to the foundation with a family trapped inside. Throughout the afternoon, Randy Johnson was looking looking for the items that were thrown from his house, one that's now unrecognizable. Yeah, this was the master bedroom. Where he lived for 23 years, leveled. The family pictures gone with it. The, the house isn't, doesn't mean a lot to me. It's just the, it's the photos. It was his mission today to get them back, and others helped him sift and search. I don't know these people. They're just uh, helping us, and I tell them what I'm looking for, and they, they're more than willing to come out here and help. Every once in a while, a find. That's me with my youngest daughter. She was born one pound, 13 ounces. Good find. Through the afternoon, he found a handful of treasure, sonograms, births, childhood photos. This is what counts, man. Yeah. Home movies and, and photos. They're small victories in the middle of unimaginable loss. And when he finds those photos, he holds on to them. Now, they've already gotten away from me once. And I'm not going to let him happen again. His search for memories takes priority. As for what's next, who knows? We don't know what to do next. We just uh, we call the insurance, you call the post office, and you pick up. You can put a dollar value on a home, but you can't put a price on what he's finding today. Many of our hometowns are experiencing dangerous floods right now. We're actually on Riverside Drive, which actually looks a lot like a river. You can see right here behind me, several swift water rescues have been taking place. Several more are still happening. As soon as those uh, water boats are coming back, they're going right back out. Now, I do want to show viewers at home some video of a swift water rescue just moments ago. You can see a young boy just pulled off of one of the boats and, and brought into safety along with other people from that boat. Um, there have been several people um, over the last hour that they've had to go out there and rescue. It went from uh, seven folks that they were rescuing to 14 to 30 just within moments. So it's been a pretty hectic scene out here for fire crews. They tell me that they have been tied up all afternoon. Now this is the first hurricane in that area to make landfall as a category four, a huge event. And we all know what happens after that. It began moving northward into Virginia the day after landfall, producing devastating flash flooding all across our area and setting record rainfall and river levels along the Dan River. Deadly floodwaters in Danville left businesses destroyed, buildings unrecognizable, and some people- I feel very blessed. Thankful. I really do, and, and, and you, you know, I, I lost a car, but not a life. Just one day prior, this was the scene outside Kim Willis's window on Riverside Drive. There were so many cars in front of me and behind me, there was no way we could move anywhere. Upwards of 40 people were stuck. It was the first of more than 100 calls the Danville Life Saving Crew and Danville Fire Department 
responded to Thursday. Everything comes so fast, it was really overwhelming. Tommy Barber said these are the moments his team trains for, but the amount of cars and the speed at which they got stuck, he has never seen anything like it. It was very scary. I wasn't really scared for myself, but more so for my granddaughter, my five-year-old granddaughter, and getting her out of the car. Within a matter of minutes, Willis's concerns were eased. Her granddaughter in the arms of a firefighter, safe. I remember her telling one of the firemen that he was a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> I don't consider myself a hero. <laughs> I just consider myself doing my job. A sense of duty felt throughout the River District. With each rescue, each power line restored and road cleared, the city moves on. WDBJ7 has been on the ground bringing you the latest as Florence moves through the Carolinas. Good morning, you can hear it, you can see it. Hurricane Florence has arrived here in Wilmington and Wrightsville Beach. We are right near the eye wall and I can feel it. This is by far the hardest the wind has been blowing, the hardest the rain has been falling. And just to kind of put it in perspective, shingles off the roof just completely being blown off. The conditions that we saw this morning, yes, they were rough, but they are nothing compared to this. Rob, take a look. This destruction speaks for itself. Right now, evacuations are underway in Lynchburg due to the threat of College Lake Dam failing. That dam could fail, part of the road could fail, and that water from College Lake could flow down into Blackwater Creek. I'm going to widen out and show you guys where that flows. So there's the College Lake. There is all the watershed that it flows down into. If that happens in about seven minutes, we could have about basically in that amount of time, about a 17 foot wall of water could go down that uh, watershed basin, which uh, includes Blackwater Creek. It's all about monitoring the situation. If you can see over my shoulder, there are people out here. It's Public Works, Department of Water Resources and Lynchburg Police are all on scene. I've been out here for the past hour and a half and they've been here as well, standing right along the College Lake Dam monitoring the water that's coming from the dam, washing over the road. There's about 225 million gallons of water within College Lake, and the watershed itself is about 22 miles that, uh, that it spreads into. So definitely something that is causing concern there. It's not every day that we have a potential dam break in our area because of that heavy rain. This is a mother just minutes away from being reunited with her son after 18 hours of not knowing where he was. I just want to hug my baby so bad. <laughs> so bad. 18 hours earlier, nine-year-old Andrew was playing outside of his house. His dad turned his back. Andrew wandered off. Within an hour, a search and rescue mission was underway. Andrew's photo was hanging on a command center door. She calls him Shug. Um, he'll finish nursery rhymes like Hickory Dickory Dock. Andrew won't answer to common search phrases. Instead, volunteers were told to try and sing the ABCs. And then he usually replies um, H-I-J-K-M-N-O-P, <laughs> which is kind of cute. He has autism with communication barriers. He's also known to strip down to his underwear. Investigators found Andrew's shoes and clothes in the thick woods behind his house. People lined the woods waiting. In case a young man walks out here, we'll, we'll be here maybe to hopefully find him. As Virginia State Police flew overhead at the end of hour 17, word reached Andrew's home on County Road that he was found. He is totally safe and fine. <laughs> this brought Andrew's mom to the gate, waiting as first responders cut him out of briars near a creek and brought him to her. Right, here they come, here they come. How are you? This is a parent's worst nightmare that actually had a good intent. And I'm so lucky and so grateful and so thankful to everybody. Jury selection is now underway in Charlottesville for the trial for a man accused of plowing a car through a group of people during last year's deadly Unite the Right rally. It is proving to be a tedious process. They started off this morning by questioning 28 of those 300 potential jurors. We've just learned that they have already let 13 of those people go. Now, a jury has found James Field Jr. guilty on all charges he was facing in connection to the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. It was an emotional scene. 
here tonight. Victims of that incident from August 12th standing on the courthouse steps, crying and hugging each other after they found out that Fields was found guilty on all 10 charges. Now, I don't know. Today is such a mix of emotions that kind of that kind of nullify each other. So it's almost a flat feeling. This is probably one of those things I'll sit at home and cry tonight because I would have been decorating for Christmas by now. A mother stood on the courthouse steps Tuesday more than a year after this Dodge Challenger drove into a crowd of counter protesters, <laughs> killing her 32 year old daughter, Heather Heyer. She would be mortified that she was known around the world, but she would be excited that hate did not win. A jury found white nationalist James Alex Fields Jr. who was driving that car guilty on 10 charges. The decision caused a celebration in the streets of Charlottesville Friday. <laughs> Tuesday, the jury recommended Fields spend life plus 419 years in prison. Getting the maximum sentence reflected the severity and the atrocity of that crime. Jean Peterson was just one of five people permanently injured in that crash. The verdict came down after six days of testimony, walking jurors through the nationally known event frame by frame. Bodies flying, Fields hands gripping the wheel as he drove away and hires last moments. There were a few days where people just held me while I cried because it was really hard to listen to. Marcus Martin, seen midair in this picture, stood on the courthouse steps alongside Hire's mom. Both called the verdict a victory. Hate did not win today, and a message has been made loud and clear that these are our streets. Who streets? Our streets. Who streets? Our streets. Who streets? Our streets. Thank you. When former President Jimmy Carter spoke at Liberty University this weekend, he encouraged Christians from different political backgrounds to unite behind their common faith. WDBJ7's Tim Saunders had a chance to speak with Carter about his commencement speech and how he came to speak at Liberty. It's in an interview you'll only see on WDBJ7. You mentioned that you were surprised to receive the invitation and you were surprised that you accepted it. Yes. What reservations did you have initially, if any? Well, there's just been an estrangement that's been very painful to me uh, between more conservative and more moderate Baptist. Now on WDBJ7, it's a diagnosis no one wants to hear. It's a day that we'll never, ever forget. And it can be devastating. Families all across our hometowns know firsthand. But kids know when something's wrong. Kids are very smart. Tonight, messages of hope from families who've been there. You always have in the back of your mind. From diagnosis to treatment, and the attitude in between. How do you feel? Awesome. Plus, new research happening right here at home. We're trying to get down to the very fundamental basis of what's going wrong. Personal stories and expert advice for loved ones. And it's good to feel healthy again. A special WDBJ7 presentation. Your Family Matters, Crushing Cancer. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of WDBJ7. I'm Jean Jadhun. And I'm Kimberly McBroom and we're joining you from a Carilion Clinic Training Center. Uh, he is always inviting, uh, just a consummate gentleman. It's really about the best way I can put it. For 10 years, Cecil Haley has made a name for himself in hardware. We want to change it to Cecil's world rather than tool world. It's Cecil's world. And it's not just because of his professionalism. That probably describes Cecil better than me. <laughs> Coworkers say he knows tools inside and out and can fix just about everything. I've seen customers even come in and ask for his prayers, and he would stop what he's doing and he would pray with them. But Cecil is now the one who needs prayers. But God told me in so many ways, it's time to quit. His longtime battle with cancer has gotten worse, and there's not a tool in the world that can fix the space he's um, leaving behind. It's still hard knowing that he's not going to be here. Sorry. <laughs> but he's the backbone of this business. To prove it, Co-workers and customers threw Cecil a huge surprise party, showing him how much they love him, even parading him around the entire store. And these people to go out of that way to do this for me, it was completely unbelievable. But Cecil spent a full decade showing them they have all the tools they need to repair the world. So I want to I want to spread that joy and help that other person have a little bit of joy in their heart. If I can do that, I'm happy. In Bedford, Leanna Scacchetti. 
WDBJ7.